I want us to turn our Bibles to Luke chapter 18. And I want to read one verse. Luke chapter 18. And I want to read verse 1. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. And this is what it says. One day, Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. I'm going to say that again. One day, Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. How many people remember recess time in school? Oh. We used to call it break time. It was a time when between classes they, they let you out so your brain, your brain could breathe a little bit. And we would go outside and we would play on the playground. Play with one another and enjoy each other's company. But sometimes, arguments would break out for whatever reason. And there would be some conflict on the playground. And at some point, one of the persons involved in those arguments would get tired of yapping and be ready for scrapping. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? Sure do. And as an indication that they were close to their wit's end, and as an expression of their decreasing ability to be able to compose themselves, they would go to the date and draw a line. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? and say, nah, don't cross that line. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. <laughs> now, we used to do that in our school. I dare you. You think you bad? You. you cross that line. That's it. I'm done playing with you. I'm drawing a line in the sand. Now, if you think you bad, you cross that line. <laughs> now, I'm not condoning violence. <laughs> But I believe that experience has some value because sometimes in life, not necessarily physically, but spiritually, you have to draw a line and tell the devil, don't cross that line. Amen? The scriptures are clear and tells us that the adversary is a bully. Peter says he goes about as a roaring lion. And what does the roar do? It's supposed to be a roar of warning. But some have said that his roar is louder and, and, and stronger than his bite because he's actually a toothless lion. His bark is bigger than his bite. He's a bully. And bullies need boundaries. If you don't set a boundary, bullies will continually and consistently bully you. And that is why it is important for believers to say, I am drawing a line in the sand. Amen. And I'm let, letting the enemy know, don't cross that line. I want to let you know this morning, that for us as believers, prayer is that line we need to draw. Because heaven opens when lines are drawn. Are you hearing me this morning? As believers, we don't draw lines with a pen. We draw lines with prayer. Prayer is the way we draw spiritual lines. And that prayer becomes our invitation for God's intervention in that situation. 
Amen? Amen. Now I want you to know, prayer can be oral, written, or mental in your thoughts. Because prayer is just simply communication with God the Father in the name of Jesus the Son with the assistance of the Holy Spirit. Look at the book of Psalms. Most of it is prayers. They're written prayers. The same spirit that leads us to pray out loud with our mouths can lead us to write it on paper. There's no one way to pray. So don't be subjected to religious pressure or conformity and assume if you are not doing it a certain way, it's not the right way. You need to customize your prayer life to how God has wired you. Now the way God has wired me, I can sit down and pray. But some people, they walk and pray. They drive and pray. They jog and pray. Some speak out loud. Some just pray in their cars. Some pray in their minds. Some pray in the shower. But no, wherever they are praying, they are drawing lines and circles around them and their families. Some of us here today are here because of a mother or a father or a grandparent, an aunt or an uncle, a brother or sister who drew a line through prayer and you were saved. The reason some of us didn't fall apart was because yes, we were in some mess, but we were also in a circle drawn by somebody's prayers. They told the devil, don't cross that line. So I have a question this morning. Where are the prayer warriors? Why, when you hear most people talk about prayer, we always talk about previous generations. Oh, my grandmother used to pray like this, or my mother used to pray like that, or the old people used to... Anybody know what I'm talking about? Most of the times when we talk about prayer, we are not talking about people in our present generation. What will our children testimony be when they talk about our prayer life? Heaven doesn't open until lines are drawn. Well, God, why don't you just do it? God says, but I told you, haven't you read the book? I told James to give you a text. And the text message was, you have not because you ask not. When you don't pray, it's an indication that you have more faith in your own ability than what God can do. Did you all hear what I say? Your refusal to ask God is a demonstration of your faith in yourself. And God sometimes says, I have to let you go to the end of yourself so you can see that faith in yourself isn't enough. Do you need to have faith in yourself? Yes. But do you need to believe in more than yourself? Absolutely. The Bible uses a word mostly in the Old Testament to describe people who understand and embrace this assignment of prayer. And the word that the Old Testament uses is watchmen. Turn your Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 3. And 
and I'm going to read with Sixteen. After seven days, the Lord gave me a message. He said, Son of man, I have appointed you as a watchman for Israel. Whenever you receive a message from me, warn people immediately. You see that? Now I turn over to Hosea. Hosea chapter 9, and I'm going to read verse 8. Hosea chapter 9, verse 8 says, The prophet is a watchman over Israel for God. The prophet is a watchman over Israel for God. And go back to Isaiah. And go to Isaiah 62. Isaiah 62. And I'm going to read verse, verse 6. Isaiah 62, verse 6. O Jerusalem, it says, Isaiah verse 62. Verse 6, O Jerusalem, I have posted watchmen on your walls. They will pray day and night continually. Take no rest, all you who pray to the Lord. You all see that? It even goes on in verse 7 and says, Give the Lord no rest until he completes his work, until he makes Jerusalem the pride of the earth. So that word watchman. Mine says intercessors instead of watchmen. Right. Good. Same thing, mm -hmm. intercessors. You see, back in the day, here, what is being used is military terms, military analogy. Back in those days, they didn't have drones. They didn't have satellites. So they had to assign an individual to be in an elevated tower to watch and see if enemy armies were coming. And based on what they saw, they were able to shout an alarm and warn that something was on the way, that a threat was on the way. And then that gave those that were within the walls time to prepare for battle. They were warned from the watchmen. God is saying, I want to use that imagery to help you understand your responsibility to pray. They had to go up in elevated towers to see. We get down on our knees to see. Amen? Amen. So my question to you this morning is... Where are the watchmen? Who's drawing lines and circles? I know we're all busy. I know we're all working hard. But who's drawing lines and circles? See, a watchman wasn't just responsible for saying everything. Just their jurisdiction that they were responsible for. We all have a jurisdiction. And who's in your jurisdiction? Well, for one, your children. If you are not drawing circles around them, who is? Listen to some real talk, family. People don't pray like they say they pray for you when you ask them to pray for you. And the reason why I say that is you'll say, pray for me. And they have all good intentions to do that. And then they walk away from there, get caught up in whatever they got to do, and they forget. 
So if you're waiting for them to pray for you, and you ain't praying for you, you ain't getting prayed for. Are you all hearing me? Yes. Wow. They, they mean well, mm -hmm. but they don't always do what they say they can do. I mean, let's get real. You don't always say you can do it you can do it yourself. That's right. Yeah. Why, why believe that somebody else is different? Oh, oh. Huh? Oh. If you are not drawing circles around your business, who is? If you are not drawing circles around your marriage, who is? Oh. If you are not drawing circles around your children, who is? If you are not drawing circles around your own mind, who is? Because sometimes your mind is going through stuff that other people have no idea what you're dealing with. And if you're not saying, Lord, I draw a circle around my mind. You promised me a sound mind. This is a whole mind. This is a mind that's going to be full of joy and peace. Sometimes we got to speak these things to ourselves. We can't wait for somebody else to do it for us. Amen? Amen. We can't afford to wait for somebody else to do it for us. Who is watching your jurisdiction? You have to draw lines and circles. And when you draw circles, things change. Amen? I want to tell you a few things that the Spirit of the Lord has put on my heart about what happens when we draw lines and circles with our prayers and let the enemy know, don't come here. You stay on that side. Don't cross this line. One of the things that prayer does and a line or a circle around you that it does, it brings Prevention. Prevention. Mm -hmm. Another word for a circle or a line drawn is a word we see in the book of Job. And that word is hedge. Everybody know what a hedge is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Bible says the enemy has an audience with, the, with God and God asks him, what have you been doing? He says, I've been going to and fro to see whose life I can destroy and devour. God says, have you considered my servant Job? Satan so say, yeah, I have. But you have a hedge around him. His household and everything he has. Now, God didn't say to the devil, there's a hedge around Job. The devil said to God, there's a hedge around him. So how did the devil know? He saw it. I think it's safe to say he tried to get to Job and the hedge blocked him. Amen? Amen? We need to thank God for the hedge. The devil tried to get through, but thank God for the things he blocked that you and I didn't even know. He stopped coming our way because of the hedge. Now, you think that hedge just got there automatically? No. Continue to read Job. Because the Bible says Job, and it's Job chapter 1 verse 5, it says Job offered sacrifices and prayed daily for his children. That's in the book. Daily he drew a line and a circle around his, him and his family. We need to be careful Therefore, judging prayer by results. Are you hearing me, family? When you wait to see the result of your prayer happen. This is a perfect example why you got to be careful with that. See, sometimes we are so busy looking at the things that came through the hedge, we don't think about how much more is on the outside of the hedge and that didn't get through. Are you all hearing me? Because that's what happened here. Prayer is working even when we don't see it working. 
Let me sing a song that says that. Yes. Even when I don't see you working, you still working. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're all just singing them songs, huh? Just to sing sing. <laughs> 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 Let's sing it. It's in the book. It's in the book. Amen. Prayer is working even when you don't see it working. Some people don't know how they got to where they are safely. I know how you get there. Hedge. Hedge. Mommy praying for you. Daddy praying for you. Grandma praying for you. I know some people pray for me. I Listen, I should have been dead five times over. But somebody put a circle around me with their prayers. Are you hearing me, family? We need to draw lines and circles with our prayers. Pray for your husband. Pray for your wife. Draw the line and say, devil, don't cross this line. Amen? Your children. Your job. I just pray for the tires on my car. Amen. So prayer, one of the things that prayer does when you, when you circle somebody with your prayer, it brings prevention, a hedge. You hear many times people pray, Father, build a hedge around them. Amen? Amen. Protect them. Another thing that prayer does when you draw a line with your prayers and encircle someone on yourself, it brings perseverance. Not only prevention, but it brings perseverance. Now let's get real. Sometimes the watchman would see something coming and send the message of warning. But the enemy still gets through the gate. If you keep reading Job's story, some things didn't get through the hedge at first, but it got through the hedge later. And because we mostly talk about prevention, many people don't understand and see the blessing of perseverance. What am I saying? We think if something gets through the hedge, we lose. And God's like, if I don't protect you from it, if I didn't pre pre prevent it from coming, I'll preserve you in it. You all hear me say it all the time. If he take us to it, he'll take us what? If you don't believe me, ask the Hebrew boys. If he won't do it. He didn't prevent some things. But when they got in the fiery furnace, he got in there with them. I write it wrong. Ask Daniel if he won't do it. He didn't prevent him from going into the lion's den. But when he went in the lion's den, he preserved him in there. Is there anyone here this morning honest enough to say, I'm in the fiery furnace right now. But somehow, I am being Preserved. I should be pulling my hair out and biting my nails down to the flesh till I bleed. But I'm not losing my mind. I have a sense of peace because the God of peace is preserving me through this difficult time. Amen? It's because prayer has drawn that circle around you and said, Devil, don't cross this line. So prayer prevents. Prayer preserves. But prayer also gives possessions. Some people are fine not wanting anything. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't happen to be one of those people. <laughs> I want some things. <laughs> All right? And if I stand up here and tell you I don't want it, I'll be telling you a lot. 
There's nothing wrong with being content and not wanting anything. I'm happy for you. I'm not ashamed to say there's some things and some stuff I want. That's right. I thank God for life and health and strength, but there's still some things I want. And He knows I want it. Amen? Amen. There are some things we want, but this is why we have to read the book. Because the Bible tells us there are some things that you just won't get until you deal with the strong man. And the strong man is the enemy. The Bible says we need to bind the strong man. Then you can possess what belongs to you. What does it say in Matthew chapter 16, verse 19? It says, And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you and some versions say by, my version says forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. And it's simply saying some things you will not possess because you don't pray and you don't ask for them. You have not because you ask not. Amen? You have not because you ask not. <clears throat> Too many people are busy pursuing and not praying. Going after and not seeking God first. What does the Bible say in Matthew 6.33? Six, but seek ye first. But seek ye first. And I keep saying, how much times are we seeking Him first? We want a lot of stuff. We want to pursue a lot of stuff. But are we seeking him first? Because he says, if you seek me first and live right, mm -hmm. then I will add. Isn't that what the book says? That's right. Hmm. We're pursuing and not praying. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 6. And I want us to think about this seriously because I think people glance over these things. And there's a seriousness to this that we glance over or take for granted. And we need to be careful because let me tell you something, family. The enemy, and when I say the enemy, I'm talking about Satan. You know what his greatest weapon is? Making you think you have more time. Deceit. Huh? Deceit, liar, father of lies. All above is true, but there's a greater thing that's his greatest weapon. The word of God. Make you believe that he doesn't exist. <laughs> Go ahead. That's, right. that's exactly right. That's exactly right. The enemy's greatest weapon is to make you think he doesn't exist. Amen. That's how he's got everybody. Because the things he brings to you, you don't think it's him. Oh. If you're ever wondering if anybody's ever listening, that was the problem. That's exactly right. That's the perfect answer. To make you think he, and that's what fools everybody. Because you don't think it's him. He comes disguised. It's the truth. And we got to be careful of that. Let me show you what the Bible says. And you see, we need to take this seriously. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. This is what it says. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood. Enemies. But against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. Against mighty powers in this dark world. And against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Amen. Now, do you believe that? Yes. How can you believe John 3.16 and then don't believe this? 
There are forces that are at work against us. In another realm, we believe everything that Peter, Paul, and everybody else say in the Bible, but when we get to this, we just fly and glance over this like this ain't important. There is a realm that exists outside of our five senses. And activity in that realm impacts and influences this realm. When you look at all the evil in the world, you have to believe in evil. Are you all hearing me, family? There is, there is evil. There is something that is influencing evil in the earth. There's a force that's influencing it. Look at people who can take innocent. Look at that crazy man Putin right now. That's pure evil. Are you all hearing me? Listen, we have an example of it in the Bible. It wasn't just greed that caused Judas to betray Jesus. Read the Bible. The Bible says in John chapter 13, verse 2, that Satan put it in the heart of Judas. Read it. That's what it says. You're all looking at me crazy. Let's go to John. Right? <laughs> John chapter 13. Let me see. Read verse 2. John chapter 13 verse 2. It was time for supper and the devil had already prompted Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. You all see that? He was influenced. We got an enemy who will influence principalities. Rulers, darkness, and we need to we need to be careful with this. There's something that's influencing evil, and you know what? We are trying to deal with some of these evil desires without dealing with the one who deposited these desires. Because the Bible tells us, in order to get some things, you got to bind a strong man. Because whatever you commit here, can happen. And we have the authority to bind him. So prayer prevents, prayer preserves, prayer also gives possessions. We can possess things. But in order to do that, we got to bind a strong man. But prayer also does another thing. And I call it, it gives a pivot. Anyone know what a pivot is? A pivot is a sudden turnaround. Prayer brings a sudden turnaround. When you draw that line, things that are heading in one direction turn around and go in another direction. Amen? It's a sudden turnaround. Remember the story in the Bible about this king by the name of Hezekiah. And God speaks to the prophet Isaiah and say, go to the king, Hezekiah, and tell him to get his house in order because he's about to die. Hezekiah is a man of influence and his passing is going to affect many people greatly. So he needs to get his succession plans in order. And he needs to make sure that the distribution of his assets are in order for when he passes. So Isaiah 
delivers the news to King Hezekiah. And the Bible says Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and started crying out to God. Turning his face to the wall means he turned his back on some things. And he began to pray. And as he began to pray, and he reminds God of his faithfulness. The Bible says while Isaiah was walking back to his house, while the prophet was walking back to his house, God spoke to him and said to Isaiah, turn around, go back and tell Hezekiah, I'm giving him 15 more years. Prayer turned things around, family. Amen? Read that in the book. I tell you this morning, God is getting ready to tell some of y'all eyes eyes to turn around. They told you that they wouldn't do it. They're going to turn around. You pray. They told you that it couldn't be done. You pray and watch them turn around. Is there anyone here this morning that can believe for a pivot in their current circumstances. Do you believe that God can turn things around in your life? I am here to tell you that through prayer, God can turn things around. Things going in one direction, prayer produces a pivot. Business tanking, I'm here to tell you, prayer produces a pivot. <clears throat> Relationships fall into pieces, prayer can turn it around. Are you all hearing me this morning? You may be heartbroken, prayer produces a pivot. God is stirring us this morning to be circle makers and line drawers with our prayers. You all have a jurisdiction and you are all responsible for your jurisdiction. And when the watchmen don't watch, others beside the watchman suffers. Prayer is not just how you call on God. It's part of your calling. Every disciple is a watchman. Amen? Let us bow our heads and pray. Lord, we come before you right now and we repent for not taking this part of our assignment seriously. The first verse that I read was we should always pray and never give up. Help us to take that seriously. That we should always pray and never give up. Lord, I feel like some of us have given up. Felt like prayer wasn't working. But today we repent. And Lord, we draw a circle around everybody and everything that is in our jurisdiction. Our marriages, our children, our hearts, our spouses, our parents, our companies, our churches, our leaders, our nation. We draw circles in the name of Jesus and give the enemy warning don't cross that line Amen. thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus name I pray Amen, Amen. Amen. family I'm here to tell you this morning that when circles are drawn heaven is open and God moves on our behalf Amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together because of praise. 
Are you drawing circles with your prayers? And like I said, be, be careful not to judge your prayers by the answers you see. Are you all hearing me? Because there are things that are happening that you don't see. How many people can tell me how many years the children of Israel were in bondage? 400 years, I think. 400 years, right? 400. 40 is how long they were in the wilderness, right? 400. The thing is, they didn't just start praying to God in year 390. Are you all hearing me? And something else. There were people born and died within that 400 years that never knew food. Yep. Yep. 400 years. Now, people were praying for freedom that entire time. But you know, God heard their prayer. He heard their prayer. And while they was over here praying to God, God was over here trying to convince Moses to accept an assignment to go free his people. Amen? So then, like, when we don't see something happening right away, God ain't working. God is working. Amen? God was working. So we need to draw some lines and some circles. That's what our prayers will do. And our prayers and our circles build hedges around us. And a lot of stuff that we don't even see or even know about because of that circle of prayer that we pray, the enemy can't get in. So keep praying, family. Amen? Amen. We look at the stuff that we see. Oh, we need to thank God for the stuff we don't see. God is still protecting his children. Amen? Amen. Let's go to God. Thank you for Jesus.